it's okay. Uh, I'm Christian. Christian, okay. Things are getting real for our 90 Day Fiance before the 90 Day couples. Maybe a little too real. As some of our couples embark on their journeys halfway around the world looking for love, others have bigger issues they're dealing with right now. Don't put your tongue in my mouth. Let's just say it gets crazy. So let's recap 90 Day Fiance Before the 90 Days Season 6, Episode 2. I'm Anna Rumor and this is Pop Culture Social Call. Last we checked in with Tyree, producers had just told him his Snapchat girlfriend of four years, Carmella, was actually a guy named Christian this whole time. I watched the show Catfish. Like, I know, like, usually what to look for when you see a fake profile. Tyree was heartbroken and disappointed in himself because he knows the signs of being catfished and still was sending Carmella money each month. Like, only 50 to 100 bucks, but that adds up. Armed with what he knows now, Tyree tries to confront Carmella about tricking him, but she's not even opening his messages. It was so sad watching Tyree convince himself that there's some kind of possibility that Carmella does exist and that he's being somehow tricked now. I still have a belief that Carmella is, you know, Carmella. And it was even more sad watching him tell his siblings about what was going down and how the trip he'd taken to Barbados a while back, that was to meet Carmella until she ghosted him. Why was you so, like, docile? Because I was in love and I didn't want to, like, push her away. I'm not sure how willing Tyree is to embrace the truth yet, despite all the evidence, because he had this response to hearing the recording of Carmilla talking to producers. Thank you so much, Are you welcome? So, what is your Sorry, it's okay. Uh, I'm Christian. Christian, okay. I feel so bad for this guy, and honestly for our next couple too. We're back with Amanda, who's traveled to Romania to meet up with her boyfriend of four months, Razvan, just like months after her husband suddenly died of cancer. And while she was super excited to see Razvan, she wants to get engaged. It seemed very clear she's not ready to take this relationship to the next level yet. This feels really weird. I feel like, I don't know. Like? I don't know. Things get even more awkward when they get back to Razvan's home. I mean, Amanda kind of copped a toot about not having space on the bathroom counter, and then the vibe was very uncomfortable when they got in bed together. I do also feel guilty for even being in a relationship with Razvan. I just don't think she's ready yet, which is totally fine, but come on, honey, go home. Meanwhile, we've got Riley over here hiring a Vietnamese PI to follow his girlfriend Violet around after learning she sent his dad more than 150 weird texts when they were in an off phase of their on-off thing. It seems to me that Violet is taking advantage of my father to try to get to me, to manipulate him. He's elderly, he's sick. Like, who does that? And we finally meet Sheila, who is eagerly awaiting boyfriend David's arrival in the Philippines. Like, very eagerly. It's always horny, every day, every day. It's good because I'm horny too. But will her jealousy issues prove to be a problem when he gets there? Or what about communication issues? She said it's hard to have serious conversations because she doesn't know ASL. At least we have one couple who has no problems at all. Jasmine and Gino. My lipstick will not only be on your face, but on my favorite piece of meat on earth. <laughs> I don't know. I was being incredibly sarcastic there. These two are a mess. I cannot wait to see what happens now that they are officially reunited in Panama. And that's the drama of our second episode of season six. What do you think so far? Which of these couples is gonna make it? Are any of them gonna make it? Let me know in the comments, like and subscribe while you're there, and head over to popculture.com for the latest in entertainment news. Until next time, I'm Anna Rumor, and this is Pop Culture Social Call.